let's move forward now. Last time we were solving trigonometric equations, but we focused exclusively on sine. Okay? That was just so that, good morning, we nailed this idea. But now let's expand it a little bit. So you can see I have my cosine graph here. I'm going to use this. It doesn't have to be beautiful. It just has to be close enough so that I can see what's going on to solve this equation here. Right? Now you remember the big uh, concept and skill that I was trying to get across last time is that whenever you see solve, and then there's something on the left, something on the right, okay, each of these really represents a graph. Right? It represents a graph. So when I gave you this before, x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 4, for instance, x squared plus 5x plus 6 is a graph. It's a parabola, right? Like that, okay? And 4 is also a graph. It's a straight line, horizontally. And I'm looking for where these two collide, okay? So, cos x, there's my cos x graph, right? What else should I put on here if I've got this on the right-hand side? That's 1, right? So I've got a half there. So right through the equation, through the graph, I'm going to draw in a half. Okay, that's a half, and my graph up here, the original one, is cos x. So if I want cos x equals a half, that's where cos x equals a half. And you can see I've got two points of intersection, right? One, two. Okay, so at this point, you can see if we want the first solution, just like we did here and here, instead of sine inverse, I've got cos, so I should go cos inverse, cos inverse right? So shift cos, if you pop in a half, okay, it should give you a solution which I hope you can start to recognize by now. What's the exact value for cos that gives you a half? It's 60 degrees, isn't it? Okay, 60 degrees. Now just pause for a second. Does that make sense? Let's have a look at our cosine graph. I haven't finished it off yet. It's gone from 0 to 360, but I haven't labeled all these important points here. For instance, what are these two guys? You actually know what one of them is, right? Cos 90, that's where it's equal to zero. What's the other one? Have a look, what, what would you guess it looks like? Now, I've gone all the way to 360 here, so halfway ought to be 180. So that's where it sort of dips down, it has its valley, right? Which means the next one over will be 270. 270. Okay, now I have a sense of the scale of this thing. Does 60 degrees make sense? Does it look about right? I think so. Like, look at this. That's where I'm expecting the answer. If I draw a dotted line down, yeah, that's about 60. I mean, you know, it was a rough graph. I just kind of drew my line. But it's in the right ballpark, okay? So there is 60 degrees. That's solution one, okay? But I have another solution. Now, remember, all these trigonometric graphs, they're like symmetrical like crazy, okay? There's symmetry everywhere. In fact, this shape that I've got right now, if I divide it right down the middle, it's just a reflection, right? It's just a reflection. So if I went forward 60 degrees to get this solution, how am I gonna get the other one? I wanna go backwards from 360, right? Can you see that that distance there should exactly match this distance here. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if it's also 60 degrees, that distance, and I'm starting from 360 going backwards, what's the actual answer? It'll be 300, right? And of course, <clears throat> if we're correct, you can grab your calculator and you can put in cos 300, and surprise, surprise, you get 1 over 2. Okay. So here is my second answer. And I can see from my graph, I haven't missed any one, two points of intersection. That's it. Okay.